Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup. It starts with d4, bishop f4, pawn to e3. Then I can take on this pawn maybe or proceed with the normal development, which is c3. Uh, in case the opponent develops the knight, you can always try and pin it. Uh, maybe develop the uh, knight here on f3. Uh, I can take this. Then go with the knight, attacking the bishop. So offering bishop. Do I really want it is the question. And actually take and go with my queen here, attacking the pawn. Which he saves. And I can go with the knight here, here on e5 eventually, which is the controlling square in the London. You can take with a pawn. So this file is opened up, so I will generally take with this now because I don't want to castle on the queen side because this is opened up. This can impact in a bad way. Let's drop the knight or get the rook active. Let's get the rook active first, attacking the pawn twice so that he has to move and defend it as well. And now uh, knight would come on to e5, looking to castle as well. This looks solid to me for now. I don't see any troubles. Bishop here, I can exchange or even play a knight still, irrespective of the fact what he does. Okay, uh, he's trying to attack the pawn here, which I can save. Oh, he's trying to spoil my castling actually. That's 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 nice idea by the opponent. He wants to take on this pawn, is what he's threatening to. But after I play pawn forward, he'll give a check uh, from sorry from b4 with the bishop and then I can't castle. So I'll castle first. Now if he takes the pawn, he loses the pawn as well. So that's an equalizer. Plus attacking this. So if he takes, I come with a queen check and then his castling gets spoiled maybe. He understands the threat. Uh, now I can play pawn for maybe. Or that can trap my queen as well. Hmm. I have to be careful. Okay, let's line up here so that there's no knight attack happening at least. The pawn is also guarded, open castles. So he has got a dark square bishop, so I have to place my pawns on the light squares for the end game just in case it occurs. Okay, after that pawn move, what weakens up here? Can I acquire that with the knight? Maybe not because, oh, I can actually. That can force him to play pawn forward, trying to trap a couple of pieces. But I go here, and after he takes, I take this, and that's a fork, which he sees. Uh, I can still go with it. At least knight here looks pretty nice, or I should wait. Just get back the bishop, maybe. Trying to hold on to this diagonal, beautiful diagonal. Queen here doesn't do much, so otherwise that could have been a nice move too. Attacking my rook um, is okay because I can get it here on the light square and, or in front of the queen. This is better actually. Going for a pawn break now. 
Okay, I'll take this. I'll let him come with the rook. Oh, he comes with a knight instead. Uh, okay. I go here, maybe. Queen is safe there, and nothing is bothering the queen there. Bishop here is one idea. Pinning his knight. So if knight then he go, goes anywhere, I can take on the bishop. He comes back instead. Uh, trying to go for a fork from here or take on my bishop. Taking my bishop is fine, but uh, it will be a fork anyway otherwise, even if I plant it somewhere else. So I need to safeguard my rook, which is here. That's the only place my rook is being defended for now. Pawn forward would be one option, trying to control this as well. Okay. Yeah, let's push it because now queen, after the knight moves, I'm attacking his rook as well. So that's a double threat. Wherever he keeps his knight, this is losing. I think that's a winning move there. Of course, if I don't blunder anything later on, I'll lose out on time. You forgot that queen will be having a reverse diagonal on c2. It takes, I can take now. The rook first goes back. I'll take this too because I can take this. Now this is one plan after he moves the queen. If he doesn't, I can just play pawn forward maybe. Not required. I'll just open up space for my king. Okay. Here. Trying to control this. Now rook here. I have to double up. Do I have to double up? No. I'll go here. Hmm, that's one idea. I have to be fast on time, that's it. This is winning otherwise. Rook for a bishop, extra pawn, what else require to win a game? I can still go with this, trying to exchange stuff. When you are ahead, always do that. I can give a check. Goes back. Uh, rook here, attacking the pawn, which cannot be defended now. Okay, he's trying to take on this pawn maybe, and then I go here, look for a draw maybe. Wait, I want to check first. He goes there, and I exchange the queen now. Easy. Trying to simplify stuff. Trying to keep everything on light squares. And then go behind. Gobble all the pawns and win it. I give this. I'll take this. King has to be always on light square, is all I need to take care of. And he's not winning it then. Here, pawn forward, pawn forward. Ah, oh, I can't take that. Go here. He cannot take. I can take this now. Yeah, there's nothing much left. 
He can resign. He can't flag me from here. I'll take this. I'll take this next. I'll take this too. Okay. I win. I reach first. Check. Go here. Yep. Over. Let's analyze the game quickly. Just trying to send off free match now. Let's analyze. I'm a bit tired. I'll just wrap it up quickly from here. So uh, the game started off with d4, uh, the London system setup from white. Open plays d5. I respond with bishop f4, standard moves. Open plays e6, e3, trying to create pyramid in the center. I respond. Open plays c5. I play c3, pretty solid. Uh, just trying to make sure that pawn structure is pretty nice in the center. Controlling most of the uh, dark squares. And I took out my bishop first of this uh, pyramid. That was important. Open plays knight to c6. I develop bishop on b5, trying to pin that knight. Plays uh, bishop d7. I get the knight on f3. h6, I would say passive. I was never planning to come on g5 with my bishop. Even if so, he can try to develop the knight in that case. So h6 is passive looking at the game situation. I took on the knight here. He takes back to the bishop. I go on with knight to e5. He develops the knight. I take on the bishop. Uh, he takes back. Now queen comes to a4, attacking the pawn. He defends. I go with knight to d2. Here he takes on the pawn. I can take with the queen or the pawn. I took uh, with the c pawn of, uh, with the idea of opening up the c file for the attack. Because I was about to castle on the king's side in this game and get my rook on the c file. And that's what happens in the game. Opponent plays bishop. I get the rook to c1. He defends with rook c8. I go on with my knight to f3. So it, as you see, there are slight fluctuations in the opening, but it's pretty solid still uh, for both the sides. Open didn't do any mistakes, so didn't I. I went with knight. Uh, I could have gone with knight to b7 straight away, but I thought of us castling. Uh, this was actually a smart move by the opponent. Uh, he actually wanted me to defend this pawn. And if I try to do that, like this, then he's coming on with the bishop, spoiling my castling. That was the whole intent, because knight here as well will spoil the castling. Uh, and that gives advantage to the opponent. So this was one crucial move which I identified after opponent played queen to b7. And so I played queen c2 later on and then he castles. I play b3. Now uh, b3 is passive uh, in the game so far but the idea is to keep my pawns on light squares. Also I can now move my queen away because b3, uh, b3 saves the pawn which was earlier on b2 which was being eyed by the queen. So just wanted to keep safe. Uh, and then, okay, I can sacrifice a bishop there. I don't see it yet. He takes maybe. I come with the queen. Where does he go? Only, only space there. I take another pawn. Just check, he's going back. Knight here doesn't do much because now if queen comes, Oh, that's mate. Oh, rook, rook on g8 is a mate, so you cannot move that. And irrespective of the fact what the opponent does, maybe... What can opponent do here? It's just another bishop, maybe? I can still give a check once he moves here. I'm coming with the knight, threatening mate, so he has to move the king, maybe? That's not mate, actually, because he can just still escape. Even if he tries to move, Okay, so once you enter in the situation, you can probably take something or the other. That was nice. Uh, this is one continuation which always can uh, be observed, and especially in computer lines, but I don't prefer uh, it that way. I A, didn't see that. Uh, B, that's risky as well. I don't know what opponent plays there, and you have to be very precise with these moves. Why to lose a piece when you can probably play solid and safer? Here, my uh, idea of knight to h4 was if he tries to go with uh, the pawn, I was thinking to go with the knight instead, not with the queen, actually. Even knight, I think, would be good enough because that attacks the rook and the bishop. 
And if he takes this, I am going to take this, and that's a fork. And after he saves, I can take the rook as well is one option. And after he takes, I can go on with the queen and give a check this time after he moves. Losing another pawn, maybe. I can take this as well. I can take uh, this too. Everything is feasible. So that was the idea behind playing uh, uh, knight to h4. But the opponent saw that and played uh, rook f7. I got my bishop back first. He tries to attack my rook with the bishop. And I save it on the right spot because rook in front of the queen is always nice. So just do that and that will be pretty happy doing that. Uh, then opponent tries to go for a pawn break and I gave him what he asked for. I took on the pawn. He takes with the knight. Uh, and I went with queen to g6 uh, asking him to uh, just trying to make sure that my queen is not attacked after he uh, moves the knight away as a discover attack. Here I played uh, rook to e1, the only possible move I would say. Oh, this loses the rook for sure. Hmm, that's nice. But he doesn't play that. He plays rook to c2 instead. Uh, and then I played f3. That was a vicious move, I would say. Because as soon as you move your knight, which happened in the game, he takes on g3, that loses the, uh, the rook there. So computer is saying you can attack the opponent's rook instead. And if I try to save it, uh, you can just try and play you know, queen here, eyeing the diagonal. And now I can take on this. And if it comes with a check, which would happen, of course, I have to move sideways and he gets to win another pawn. This way, at least uh, black would have some compensation in the game. Uh, but rather, my opponent tried to take on the bishop, which he lost due to which he lost the rook. And then he saves the knight, but knight is actually not saved because it's offering knight exchange. And so I take it, and there's a free pawn for the taking as well, which I do take. And then I just play h3 with the idea of no back rank weaknesses of threats of queen coming somewhere. And I don't want to, I just want to make sure that I have ample of space for my king to run just in case. Uh, rook defends the pawn on d7. Uh, I play. Rook, rook d7 defends the pawn on d5. I played rook to e2. Uh, opponent attacks with the queen and I get it on c2, the empty file. The idea was always to exchange stuff after you're up. Always do that. Uh, that's what I do. He takes, I take back with the queen, then get the queen back on f5. Then get the rook active on d1, attacking the pawn, which cannot be defended now. I took, with, I took the pawn first. A check. And here, uh, I don't want to, again, keep make it risky by playing some other move. Uh, I thought I'll just exchange queens and then win it easy from there. Uh, does this work? Let me check queen here. If he goes back, then yes, of course. I can just go here. Bishop comes in between. A check would make sure that the bishop is lost. And then he cannot take on the pawn. Yeah, he still cannot. So my worry was if I have to move my queen somewhere else, uh, he can take on this pawn and probably force me into some repetition from here, here, something or the other. So I don't want to give him draw chances from there. So I just went on with exchanging queens, which he does. And no other option there. That was a forced queen exchange. Then I got my king active. My pawns are on light squares. Very important, uh, making sure that Pawns are requiring light squares because the opponent has got dark square bishop, which will be useless if everything is on white. And my king is always on white. That's what I needed to ensure. I played e4, uh, making sure that my pawns, every pawn is on light square. He tries to defend. I give this pawn away uh, with the idea of I can capture two. Uh, and that's what I do. I give a check. Then proceed with my pawn, attacking the bishop. All those moves were pretty fast and... I was losing out on time, uh, but eventually I covered it up. Uh, open doesn't have anything there. I just attack the bishop and go on uh, to f7 now with the rook taking on the pawn. Next, uh, he goes back. I am just willing to take all the pawns, not bother about what to do next. And here, just I took on the bishop as well and just trying to promote the queen eventually. Got the queen on the board. 
and then just trying to take another pawn, making sure that there's nothing much left in the game. I was mate in six from there. Probably a queen would come very soon, and that's over. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. If you did like it, do like it on YouTube as well. Keep watching and sharing. Do let me know if something else has to be covered that helps you improve your game. Um, and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye bye.